Okay. You guys are all wide awake, right? You didn't have like tons of food and drink a lot of hard liquor last night at that fantastic dinner or anything, so you're all ready to roll. I'm David Bloom, this fantastic panel talking about uh, the, new, the new world of publishing. And it's kind of interesting because it, to me, I, uh, I remember Gutenberg. And, you know, when he was doing movable type and I was on his early newspapers, uh, we only published to print. And that is so not the thing that is publishing now, right? We've got a lot of stuff going on. I guess I would want to start, if I could, with just a conversation about what counts as publishing now. Max, you want to give us a start? Yeah, sure. Um, I think it's I think it's it, there's so many things that count, right? And, and that's what we're talking about, and that's what makes it difficult. The analogy that I've been kind of thinking about leading up to this is the way that I treat my fantasy football team, looking at uh, publishing through the world of sports. So if I need advice on fantasy football, I can go to my friends, I can go to TikTok, and I can go to ESPN.com, and each one of them is going to have value. So my friends, they're not necessarily publishing anything. They're just people to talk to. But if I go on TikTok, I'm going to find, you know, a thousand different pundits with their takes. And most of those, all, a lot of those are going to be like super valid and super useful. Um, but then I'm going to go to ESPN.com and I'm going to have information from inside reporters who are talking to teams and talking to players and um, doing, doing their research, uh, right? And they're also going to have their opinions there. Um, so that's the kind of one example of the way that I'm looking at it is this kind of spread out space where um, everybody, has, everybody has an opinion. Everybody has an opportunity to share that opinion. Um, and certainly everybody has that opportunity to put it online. And um, the validity of it is kind of up for you to decide. And in this case, it's how well did your team do week six? Did you listen to that guy on TikTok? And if so, did that work for you? And if not, let's move on to your buddy into ESPN.com instead. Well, see, that brings me to an interesting place, which is how, how do we figure out as uh, influential people, each of you, um, overseeing partnerships, overseeing platforms for major media companies. Um, how do you decide where you're going to be? If we've decided that pretty much everybody's a publisher now, they're a creator, they're a publisher, there are places to go, information that you pay for either with your attention or your subscriptions or your affiliate marketing purchases or whatever, um, but particularly your attention. Um, how do you decide? I mean, how does that work for a big company? Colette, talk a little bit about how you all think about where you want to be. It's where our fans are, right? So we're curating to them. And but how do you find your fans? How do we find them? They, they come to our content. So we have premium content of where we've built incredible, incredible fan bases across our sports content, across our Bravo content, across our Today Show. We have developed many platforms, not just in the linear space. We built Peacock Ground Up three years ago um, and all of our social platforms. We're not just in one space having one conversation. We're having multiple conversations and it matters. We're meeting our fans who love our content and respect us as a publisher because we are a legacy publisher but we're also speaking to our fan base differently depending on what medium we're in. So it's fun for us. We get to create you know, new spaces in TikTok. We get to create new spaces now in threads. We get to be on X and how we speak to our fans on that medium is important because it matters. They're coming to that platform for what that platform will give them, whether that's image-based, whether that's short video-based, whether long form on Peacock, we're creating all types of content to make sure that it resonates on that platform. And we create that content with the right creators in mind. Some are in our ecosystem and some we pull into our ecosystem to be able to, again, resonate authentically, utilizing our IP. Okay. So, Natasha, how do you, like, where, where have you guys decided to be? Vice started out... Um, as a print publication a thousand years ago in Canada, right? And certainly has gone a long way since then and gone through a lot of different paths. Uh, but it was one of the early uh, online aware, intensely online aware uh, publications. Where is it now? And how are you helping decide who you partner with, how you uh, push Vice and Vice's products out there? 
Yeah, so, I mean, you know, Vice has several different brands under the Vice umbrella. So there's Refinery29, there's ID, there's Vice, you know, Vice News. Um, and I think we're we're finding our communities in each of these each of these places that used to maybe go to dot com and now we're leveraging them on new platforms to your point like on TikTok like we had zero followers speak into on your TikTok. mic sorry speak into your mic oh sorry um we had zero followers on TikTok two years ago and now there's eight million across all of our brands and so that's a big indication that like we're trying to lean into where our communities are going where they either want to find news or they want to find entertainment um and making sure we're reaching them but we're not you know we're not alienating our core audience that might have been reading Vice for 15 years. Um, and so I think it's about keeping community as like core to all of these um, publishers and and understanding that that's where we need to lean into, even if it's on a different platform. It's about creating that community. I think subscription's another area that will continue to grow where people may pay if they really want to get this information or they really want to watch a show on NBC, they'll go to Peacock and spend the money. And so I think it's about leaning into community, like first and foremost. So you're actually, I mean, what's the status of your subscription side and how does that interplay with your- So it's new I, and it's it's something that they're testing like tip jars and I think particularly on Vice News, which is not my business, but- um, but that is an area. Tips used to mean a whole different thing in the news yeah, business. But, I but just now want to it's, say it's so. a really big thing when it comes to journalists and and people really want to see good news that is unbiased and you know they can get the facts and so they're leaning into journalists that are doing that well and tipping them as a result. It's the same thing if you were on YouTube and you were you know you can on de many different platforms you can you can monetize you know with your audience. So we're leaning into that too. Yeah, it's an interesting thing as an old journalist like me to think about what that means in terms of uh, that kind of tip versus, hey, here's a really interesting story. But um, Max, talk to me a little bit. You guys, um, your parent company, Disney, just did a, a, a large deal, but not that large a deal with a gambling site. Um, how does that interact with what you do in social media? You were talking about the fantasy football stuff, which is a kind of gambling. And we've certainly got, uh, I mean, it's, it's Penn is doing it, right? So uh, not, not one of the biggest of the gambling sites, but they put up some serious money, a couple billion dollars. How do you um, interact with somebody like that who's helping bring money in in a very large way? He's already put money up in a large way. How do you interact and partner with them to amplify what they're doing in support of the broader corporate needs of ESPN and Disney in turn? Yeah, great, great question. So um, next month, ESPN is going to launch our ESPN bet sports book. And that, that, so that's, that's, Penn is the, behind it. Um, they're the existing sports book that used to work with a different partner. Um, but yeah, ESPN bet will be, come real. And that really changes things because we're no longer just a uh, news and entertainment uh, site or media property or TV network. We are now a sports book. Um, and that, I mean, gosh, talk about like, you're, you know, if you want to, your words, old school journalists, like the principle. The emphasis on old, so anyway. The prin the principles of what we're doing and what we can do and, and where we draw the line is, is it's very nuanced and very interesting and will be, um, there will be some subtle changes in the way that we go about things because, again, we are the sports book. But it's ultimately embracing a different aspect of sports that is becoming uh, more and more popular within the U.S., more and more legal within the U.S. Of course, it's not legal here in California. It doesn't feel like it will be. It's like time. I think about a third of the states still haven't legalized sports gambling. So how do you all even, like I'm sure for you, you've got a bunch of headaches ahead of you, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're happening right now. So I won't get into the weeds that too much. But um, but again, it, it, it distinguishes us and what we're doing. And, and at the end of the day, and, and certainly the approach that I take managing our social media team is it's all about, expanding our audience and finding new ways to grow the audience of sports. So I brought up fantasy earlier, like fairly strategically, because that's a very popular right now amongst people who both do and do not watch the NFL. Um, Taylor Swift is very popular right now amongst people who do not do and do not watch the NFL. It's all relevant. So well, they're watching it the last six weeks. Actually, yeah, Well, so. I don't know if they're watching. It. I know they're clicking on our social media. I know that they're liking the posts. I know that even if some folks are sick of it, the engagement speaks otherwise. And that engagement is so important to us because, um, again, it's all about expanding and kind of sharing what 
has been just traditionally this TV model um, and putting it out there in different avenues and different ways to engage, whether that is in social media, whether that's engaging with the influencers that we either bring into our page or we're just simply sending to games and giving credentials so that they can do their thing, um, or whether that's providing this sports book where in, you know, if you're privileged in one of these states where it'll be launched soon, you get to uh, engage with ESPN in a whole new way and, and hopefully make some money. So that changes what you're putting out, though. I mean, can you geofence this stuff, it's, or how does that? Yeah, it's it's subtle. It's subtle changes. It's subtle changes at the end of the day, but changes nonetheless. I mean, it's um, yeah, it comes down to the the, the specifics of: am I telling you uh, that this betting line is available, or am I telling you um, what to put your money on? And and it's going to be more of the former than the latter. Because you all have been doing Disney and ESPN, or ABC, not ABC so much, but but ESPN. Um, has been providing gambling information, as many publications, however you define them, has put it for a while. But this is just tweaking it a little bit, but still walking a line, it sounds. Again, it's different to be uh, the the publication as opposed to the sports book. Right. Now, Colette, uh, I think NBC had a game with uh, Taylor Swift at it, too. I'm just wondering if you guys, how that's impacted some of what you're doing and how you all outreach. All of a sudden, we've got you know, different planets. It's like when Star Trek and Star Wars fans get together and the universe ends or something. I, you know, the Taylor Swifties and the, the NFL fans uh, coming together just seems like an interesting uh, collision of universes. We celebrate it, right? It, we celebrate the Swifty fans coming. We celebrate when she can drive such an incredible force as a female power to the commerce of that, of the, of the football. All the jerseys have gone selling out. We celebrate her in our camera angles. We celebrate her in the publication. We celebrate everyone who is celebrating that. So we bring that in and we welcome it with open arms and our ratings are through the roof, right? And so when we see that, we know our fans are leaning in and now we have new fans that we can talk to that we might not have been talking to before. So let's make sure that dialogue with the new fan base is relevant to them and it's not just oh, you know what, let's just do last Sunday's telecast exactly the same way. That doesn't make any sense. We have a whole new audience that just tuned in. So let's make it welcoming. Let's make it valid. Let's make it imperative. And then they come back and watch with us. Have you guys seen any stickiness with, I mean, I've just seen so many anecdotal reports of uh, particularly young female audiences, which the NFL has been crying to get in the door showing up because of the Taylor uh, uh, Travis uh, stuff. Have you all seen anything like that in terms of some of your work? I, actually, either one of you, and then I'll get back to Natasha in a minute. But any, have you seen any impact with that audience shifting over into some interest in the sports space? I'm just sort of curious here. I think it's early, right? Like to see stickiness right now, I think it's a little early, but it's nice to see, right? So we're celebrating the moment that we're in right now and how we're, again, um, as, a, as a responsible publisher, that we're bringing them in and, and showing the full breadth and depth. You'd be surprised, football isn't all male. Like, we're not, we haven't been crying to get the females, they're there. I think what Swift has brought, Swift has brought into this and her huge fan base is this celebration that's just been different. It's a different conversation, it's opening it up different, um, and, it's, and, it's, and it's been incredible to watch. Interesting. Now, Natasha, as you guys have um, evolved over the years, how, how do you define even the Vice brand now as you reach out to your partners? Because and, 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 it has left uh, a lot of footprints over the, dec over the couple of decades it's been around. How do you define kind of what the Vice brand is and how do you, what kinds of audience or, or partners do you reach out to as, as the head of that process? Thank you. Well, again, the Vice brand is so many different brands underneath it. So we're reaching out to the same brands we always have. And I think it's just focused on whichever whichever vertical we're looking at. If we're looking at our unbothered vertical, it's a certain client. If we're looking at our refinery vertical, it's different than our Vice. You know, And I'm not in sales, so um, I can't speak to how we go out to brands. But I can speak to when brands come to us and they wanna be on our platforms or they wanna work with creators, we know the best way to reach them. We're looking at you know, the audience that will get them interested. Maybe it's a new audience that 
you know, has never um, engaged with these platforms before, but we're trying to get them, you know, to see these brands. And so that's how we're, that's how we're doing it. I just noticed that our countdown clock is obscured by two lovely young women over there. I have no idea how much time 946. Thank you. Could I get a voice from on high? Cause I don't want to dis displace them. Uh, but uh, I wanted to not lose this. I was just reading. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Um, I need all the help I can get. Uh, I, I was just reading some stuff this morning in the Wall Street Journal about um, Twitter slash X. Uh, I guess let's just call it X and see if anybody's puzzled. If you're puzzled in this room, it's probably a bad sign, right? Um, but we still write, uh, formerly known as Twitter, in every story that I seem to read. Uh, platforms like that are kind of in an interesting place, and I'm curious where it sits in your all strategy now. We've heard a lot of conversation about its reach, about advertisers have left, about uh, far fewer users, uh, Threads is having a second life all of a sudden, it seems like. I'm just curious for you, for instance, uh, Natasha, is that a place that you all still find value in and reach? I mean, that's what I do every day. So um, our job is to create content on um, on influencer channels um, that tell a brand story. So we do that every day. We do it with all of our partners. Of course. Um, I think it's more critical than ever to be there. Um, I think that now it is the center of the conversation because these creators and even brands, frankly, like even a refinery, they are driving people directly to purchase product or to influence them to go into a store or, you know, to watch a show or any of that. So I think it's critical now. Um, I think it's the center. I wish we had, you know, more resources and more money put into it um, because it's so critical. You're talking about X is so critical. No, no, I'm talking about I'm talking about all the social media platforms. Of course they are. And that, I, that part I get. I I'm just I'm curious X. about specific platforms and strategy within that there's, universe. There's, there's different strategy for yeah. each platform, obviously. Like we focus really heavily on Instagram and TikTok, but we certainly I'm I'm looking at threads. I'm now seeing threads in my feed all the time, which I find very interesting because I see some interesting you know posts, and then I'm like, oh, let me let me read into that a little bit more, and maybe it'll drive me there, but it's an ecosystem. Like you kind of need to be everywhere. And I think it's also nimble. There's new platforms all the time. Like I remember when clubhouse, like every brand was asking about clubhouse. Um, and that, I that, that took about 38 hours, I think. But, I mean, I, and I'm still on clubhouse. It's important that yeah. people double down and take a look at it or, um, you know, and, and figure out where, you know, where the community is going and you kind of need to go with them. So, you know, we don't spend a lot of time, you know, I don't spend a lot of time working with brands on Twitter, but that may change if they, you know, change the platform or if Threads takes off or, you know, it's important to know what's going on on these platforms. Yeah. Um, I think Threads is sort of interesting this second because they had that initial rush right. in the summer and then everybody, nobody goes there, it's dead, you know. How did that happen? It just barely got alive, and now it's apparently alive again. Any thoughts about Threads, Twitter, Mastodon, Blue Sky? <laughs> Let's keep going. Yeah. I think it's a platform, and same thing. We program by platform. So how do we program to X is not how we program to TikTok, but we're on all platforms because we're reaching all audiences. And again, it just goes back to that authenticity that each platform brings. People are coming to those platforms. And what's the new one? TikTok is the latest one. What's the next one? I know we keep looking at the horizon. What's a blip on the screen? Um, and what are ones that are here to stay? And we're right there with them. And we celebrate it. We join in the communities that are there. Um, and we speak to them because that's exciting to us. It's exciting to be able to connect with communities and connect with communities authentically in those environments with our content, with our creators, with our brand partners, um, and being able to have, a, have an incredible conversation with them there. Any uh, platforms on the horizon that you're interested in? The platforms that are on the horizon, to be honest, I'm, I'm obsessed with what we can do with our avatars and our digital space and bring it into the metaverse and, and create worlds. So that stuff is exciting to me personally. Um, so, so immersive experiences and your avatar with the Balenciaga 
sweatshirt or whatever on it, right? I'm not sure I'm the Balenciaga type female. <laughs> well, you're very stylish, so I was just throwing that out there because they've been very savvy about this stuff. But that does excite me. It does excite me what we can do in the digital space. It's ever evolving, and I'm all in for it. Okay. So, Max, uh, obviously ESPN, a very specific slice of the universe with its own little differentiations between the gamblers and the fantasy football players and the folks who just like this sport or just like college football but not really pro football and all that. Where are you guys turning your attention now? Or you just been so consumed with the gambling, the book? Well, Gosh, I have been. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, to, to kind of speak to what, what they both have said, it's, it's, it, it's about differentiation. So um, on my team, we, we have 70 different handles across um, uh, the five or six, if I'm including threads, um, main accounts. I'm not including YouTube in that. Um, are the main platforms, okay? So 70 different handles. We're posting 400 times a day. And each one of those is different. It's all about differentiation for different platforms, different fans, different sports, different groups. The We were in a, the news a little bit this week, or the LinkedIn news this week, because ESPN, at ESPN, became the number one most followed brand on TikTok with 42 million followers. So if you want to know where our attention is at, uh, it's, it's, it's right there. Weird that you'd be on TikTok, the fastest growing platform. Um, I was at another conference a couple of days ago. The Advertising Research Foundation had a little little shindig on streaming video, OTT uh, on the Warner lot. And one of the conversations there was going using short form to push people to long form. And it's hard to go the other way. Long form doesn't say, oh, go to TikTok. But TikTok does say, go see my show on Peacock. Right or go see the the documentary about I don't know people trying to cross the border that Vice is going to run or the fantasy football stuff. How are you all using short form to drive into your longer form premium content? Any thoughts? Any? Say it's it's like critical. So I we just did a campaign for a new show, a new season of a show on Vice, and we reached out to a ton of creators and they were just posting tune in. So we're using it all the time, whether it's internal or like I said, external, we work with a lot of entertainment partners and we're driving tune in to all of their shows and we're using creators through Instagram stories or TikTok to drive people, usually Instagram stories because it's relevant for that moment. But um, we're using it all the time, both internally and externally for our own stuff and for brands. Warner Brothers had an interesting take. Uh, they'd done some research um, about certain types of short form that worked better for, like, they used some stuff from uh, Friends. And so they suggested in their little study that they just put out last week that uh, people doing impressions of, like, Rachel and whatever her other name was, um, uh, um, talking to each other helps drive more interest in even a well known property like that uh, but there are certain types of short form so what do you see colette we do tremendous on youtube with snl right the clips oh yeah are speaking for themselves they're self-containable in short form like right? who stays up past nine o'clock now i'm just saying i mean now probably all you young people right um but but the clips are, are it's just chopped up just like uh uh stephen colbert or somebody might be. so sometimes it's not about pushing but editing and cutting and it's and it's it's the one piece of content you don't need to push to the long form and the short form speaks for itself and is pretty powerful fallon can be done that same way on youtube and is a tremendous tremendous impact it's it's same for me it's less about pushing directly um or in that moment right if we post a LeBron James dunk. It's not so much to go turn on the Laker game right now as much as it is just to kind of continue to create this fans and this awareness and um, generalization. But when we do want to push, that's when creators come into play because a creator or or our own talent from within ESPN, if they say, hey, go Like a Pat now, McAfee or whatever. Pat McAfee says, hey, go watch this right now. It is much more effective, infinitely more effective than just the brand page saying tune in right now. All right, we're going to have to wrap it up at that, so we're out of here eight seconds late. Sorry about that. Thank you, guys. Give these guys a big Thank hand. You. Thank you.